Hi, my name is Shaquille O'Neal. My nickname is Shaq. I am 6 foot 3 and I was born in Newark, New Jersey. I am a very outgoing person and I have a lot of friends. When I first started b-ball was when I first got my own basketball. A few years after, when I got into college, I started in the Orlando Magics. I did not move to Florida, I just went down there for games. We did not make it to the championships that year, but I was so good I was drafted to the NBA. I was drafted to the Rockets my first year. The old man, one of my best friends, was on the same team. He was one inch taller than me, but we were like brothers. We made it to the championships and won. After that, I was drafted to the LA Lakers. We had a good year all around. My name is Steve Beckham. I am a professional football player, or what you Americans call a soccer player. I currently play for the team Real Madrid. I have been playing for this team since 2003. I am from Baytownstown, which is near London. Did you know I am married to Victoria Adams? Many of you may remember she was Posh Spice. She was a member of the singing group called Spice Girls. I have three sons, Brooklyn, Romeo, and Cruz. My parents still come and watch me play in my soccer games. They live in England. I also have two sisters, Joan and Mike. Growing up, all I dreamed about was someday playing for my favorite team. Manchester United. Can you guess what age I started playing soccer? I started at the age of seven. I was not one of the biggest players out on the field when I first started playing soccer. I signed my first professional contract when I was only 13 years old. However, it took me years of training and playing on various teams to improve my soccer skills and get noticed by the coaches of Manchester United. You may think it's easy for me as a professional player out on the field if you have watched me play a game, in a game on television. However, it, however, it be, however, to become a professional player in Europe, it takes many years of training and hard work. Soccer over in Europe is physical play, but I truly enjoy playing the game of soccer. I finally became a professional player, soccer player in 1993. However, I did not play my first game for Manchester United until 1996. So I still had to train and play lots of games to finally earn my spot on the team. I played for Manchester United up until 2002. Manchester United won several championships, like the European Cup in 1999. I remember scoring an amazing goal in one of the games. I kicked the ball from midfield. It curved up to the upper corner of the net. Can you believe that I scored from the center of the field? That is where you start the game. That is probably why they got how they got the idea for the movie Bend It Like Beckham. I not only play soccer, I am very active in various charity groups in Europe. I work closely with UNICEF I also, and also with the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. I also have been honored by the Queen of England. I received the Oval Award. I bet you were wondering what the Oval Award is. It is one of the highest honors a regular person can be awarded in England. It was for my years of service to soccer. Well, my dream was to stop circle schools to help children everywhere to learn the game of soccer. I love playing this sport and I want to share it with others. Playing soccer is my dream. I want to help other children reach their dream by being a professional player like me. I'm Eleanor Roosevelt. I was born on October 11, 1884, in New York, Amsterdam. This was later known as New York. I have two brothers, Elliot Jr., who was born in 1889, and Baby Hall, who was born in 1891. My mother, Anna, died before I was eight in 1891. My father, Elliot, died before I was 10 in 1894. 
On March 17, 1905, I married Franklin Roosevelt, who later became the 31st president from 1933 to 1945. I had four sons, Franklin Jr., Elliot, James, and John. I also had a daughter, Anna. I held the first woman press conference with only female reporters on March 6, 16, 1933. I was also one of five delegates and co-director of the Women's Committee. I helped write the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. In 1935, I published my newspaper article called My Day, which I continued until I died in November of 1962. I was buried at Hyde Park next to my husband. Hi, my name is Tiger Woods. My, my dad's name is Earl and my mother's name is Cole Tiger. I was born December 30th, 1975 in Cypress, California. One day when I was 10 months old, I picked up a, I picked up a putter and smacked a golf ball. I've been playing golf ever since. When I was 18 months old, I went to a golf course for the first time. I scored an 11 on a 410 yard par four. Then in 1982, I played in the Optimus Junior World Tournament. I finished eighth of 150 golfers. When I was 15, I won the Junior Amateur, lost the U.S. Amateur, and then came back later to win the U.S. Amateur three years in a row. On Tuesday, August 27, 1996, I declared myself a professional golfer. In April 1997, I won the Masters, a major tournament in professional golf. Then, December 31st, 1997, I was named Male Athlete of the Year. Did you know I'm only the fifth golfer ever to win that award? And did you also know that now I'm referred to as the number one golfer in the world? Just as importantly, I manage and represent several charities helping people all over the world. My name is Shaka the Zulu Clan. I was born in 1787 in Southern Africa. My mother's name is Nani and my father's name is Sunsa Gaganka. King of the Zulus. And we live in villages in crowds up on the hillsides. My crowd is called Bulaweo. We lived in small huts in our crowd. My people herded cattle, goats, and sheep for survival. When I was six years old, I was guarding my herd when a wild dog killed a sheep. This was a disgrace to my culture. My father was very angry with me, and my mother stood up for me. And my, my father was so outraged that he sent us to live with the plant my mother originated from. My mother's plan was dreadful. It was tough for me because all the boys teased me and broke my only toys that were small play animals. A drought came and we were considered a burden and were forced to leave our home once more. We found a new kind of plan that gave my mother protection. They had an army that all the boys my age fought and for Dingus Whale, the great chief. I did not like the way we fought by throwing wooden spears or sig eyes at our enemy. So I went to the magic man and he made me a sword like a say guy that I practiced with until I was as swift as a dancer. In battle, I volunteered to fight an enemy chief one-on-one -on -one with my new say guy. I won. After that, my father died and I became the new king. With my new fighting technique and strict rules, I won many battles. My army grew to be 40,000 men. With my, then, my mother died. I was so upset that I made my men guard her grave for one year. Then, with no break, I made them go back to battle. This made my army very mad, and some of them even thought I was crazy. In 1828, some of my men and my two half brothers inspired to kill me. In 1828, I was murdered and died. Hi, my name is Jane Goodall. I was born on April 3, 1934 in England. I have always loved animals. Since I love animals so much, my sister Judy, two of my friends, and I started an alligator club. The club had many pets. 
bugs, lizards, and stuff like that. The club had nicknames. Each of us had one. <coughs> I started working with chimpanzees when I visited Africa at the age of 23. Now I spend most of my time talking about my work because I'm too old to go to Africa and discover more about the wild and nature in general. When I was younger, I worked with my mom, grandmother, and sister. My dad was in the army. I lived in Bournemouth, England. When I was about your age 10, I got migraine headaches often when school began, but I never complained to show how strong I was. My favorite book was Dr. Doolittle. When I read Dr. Doolittle, I suddenly wanted to go to Africa, be like him, and talk to animals. When it was just a boring old day, we would go to the library. I checked out and read Dr. Doolittle so much that for Christmas, my mom got me my own copy. I also enjoyed reading Tarzan books and the Jungle Book series. The reason I went to Africa is because that is the only place you can find chimpanzees. My favorite type of monkeys are chips, but technically chips are not monkeys, they're apes, but chips are still my favorite. I went to Kenya, Africa. That is in the eastern part. I have seen at least 100 monkeys and chips put together and more. Did you know the first chimp that accepted me named David Greybeard? When I was in jungles and rainforests, I was very curious. I have also been as nice and easy to be with as possible. I worked with Lewis Leakey and we studied ape behavior. I learned that chimps and apes live and travel together just like we do. After chimps and apes are familiar with you, they do not, they are not scared of you. For about two to three years, I've had a goal to save the chimps. The reason is the people who cut down trees ruined chimpanzees' homes, and it was very sad, but a lot of the chimps ended up dying. I think I saved more chimps than you would think. When I was about 10 and older, I had a favorite and special treat. I would read books in the tree and just enjoy nature. One year, my grandmother realized I liked it so much, she gave it to me for a birthday present. I have published many research papers, delivered speeches, and worked on educational programs on public TV. I hope those who read, listen, and watch my stuff can learn and enjoy. I also hope you've enjoyed learning about me. My name is Benjamin Franklin. I was born on January 17, 1706 in Boston, Massachusetts. I was the 10th and youngest son out of 17 children. When I was a boy, I invented, swim I invented swimming paddles to help me swim faster. I began, I began school when I was 18 years old. When I was 8 years old. I was good in reading and writing, but not too good in math. My family did not have much money, so when I was 10 years old, I went to work at my father's soap and can candle shop. I really hated working there. The smell of the wax and boiling soap was terrible. When I was 12, I started when I started working at my brother's printing print shop. I loved books and poetry, so working there was excellent for me. I helped print one of the first newspapers in America. I even wrote articles for the paper, but signed them using a different name. My, bro my brother found out I was writing these articles and stopped printing them in the paper. When I was 17, I left the printing shop and moved to Philadelphia. That's where I met Dorfa Reed and married her in 1728. We had three children together. In 1730, I was 22 years old and set up my own print shop and published a newspaper. In 1748, I was 42 years old and a rich man. I retired from the printing business and focused my time on inventing, experimenting, and public service. 
I helped establish the first police and fire departments in Philadelphia. In, in, third, in the first leading library and hospital in America. I was even made postmaster of Philadelphia and actually postmaster of all 13 colonies. It's a great pride in my inventions. I invented the Franklin stove, which heated a room better than a fireplace. I also invented bifocal glasses and a long arm. I was very creative with, with electricity. I proved that electricity is that lightning is electricity by flying a kite in, in a thunderstorm. I also invented the lightning rod, which attracts lightning for electricity. I was chosen to help write the Declaration of Independence when America won its independence from England. I helped write the peace treaty. I spoke out against slavery and worked hard to outlaw it. Sadly, I died on April 17, 1790 at the age of 84. I was known as a scientist, writer, inventor, printer, and statesman, but most people just considered me as a great American. So much that my picture is presently on the $100 bill. My name is Yame. My height is currently 7 foot 5 inches. That is one inch taller than Shaq O'Neal. But did you know me and him are almost brothers? My hometown is Shang, China. But things were not as easy for me as you might think. I had to ride on a small bike, and when I got home, my legs would really hurt me. I got through it even eventually. So I guess you guys want to know my family. Well, my mom's name was Fang Fang, and my dad's name was Yao Shiyan. I got drafted to the NDA when I was when I was 22 years old. Isn't that amazing? Now to talk about my education. I went to a special basketball academy for my schooling for my schooling in Shanghai. I am a great leader because I help my team, the Rockets, get ready for games and practices. I try to be a leader and good role model for kids. You can watch me on and check play on ESPN. Bye. I am Martin Luther King Jr. I was born January 15, 1929, and died April 4, 1968. I was a Baptist minister and American political activist and was the most famous leader of the American Civil Rights Movement. I won the Nobel Peace Prize before being assassinated in 1968 and was the youngest person to receive this. In 1977, I was awarded the Presidential Medal for Freedom by Jimmy Carter for my promotion of nonviolence and racial equality. I am considered a peacemaker and martyr by many people around the world. Martin Luther King Day was established in my honor. I'm Bruce Lee Adams. I was a frontiersman in the mid-1800s. My real name is John Grizzly Adams. Did you know I had a TV show named after me? I was born in Massachusetts on October 12, 1812. I never went to school. I was a shoemaker for many years, but I didn't like that job, so I quit. I left my wife and two daughters behind when I heard about a gold rush in California. I went to find gold, but I didn't find any, so I became a trapper instead. I started by trapping beavers for their fur. Then I decided to to try to capture and train bears. I became friends with the Indians in that area. I learned about the I learned how to navigate through the forest from them. I set up my camp near the Indian village. 
I caught my first bear with my Indian friends so long. I had to kill the mother bear, and her two cubs ran off. I captured them four days later. I named them Lady Washington Funny Joe. I trained the cubs to do tricks. Soon after that, I caught two more cubs. These cubs were really young babies, about two weeks old. Their mother was killed by a wolf. I shot that wolf a couple, di a couple days later. I gave one of the cubs to my Indian friend, Solon. Solon named the cub General Jackson. I named mine Benjamin Franklin. Ben became my favorite bear. Ben was also known as Gentle Ben. Ben saved my life two times. One time from a giant sheba that cut me in the head. The other time was from a she bear, but a regular sized one. I caught and trained five grizzly bears in my lifetime. When I got hurt by the giant she bear, the cut didn't heal right. I got it got badly infected from all the germs and bacteria on the bear's claws. I became weak and sick. I traveled back to my family in Massachusetts with my five bears. My friend P.T. Barnum was helping take care of my family. When I got too sick to take care of my bears, I sent them to a zoo. I died October 25, 1860, 13 days after my birthday. I was 48 years old and known as a legend. Even my buckskin clothes that I wore most of the time are, on, are in the museum on display in Worcester, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Joan of Arc. I was born in Fort King Club in Domremy, France. I had one mom and dad and three brothers and sisters. They are all older. I am the youngest. Some of them are old enough to move out. I am brave. I dressed up like a boy to fight in the war. I am kind. I did all that for my country. I am strong. I never gave up even when I was held prisoner. My greatest accomplishment was fighting in the war. Saints came and told me to go. Sometimes they are wrong enough. My goals are trying to save the country and not to get caught and sent to jail. I definitely tried my hardest to accomplish my goals. My obstacles are the people who could figure out I'm a girl and send me to jail. I managed to keep away at the beginning, but soon I got really close to them and they found out. When they took me to jail, Nine days later, I found out I was going to get burned. The saints told me I was going to be rescued, but after that, I never saw them again. I died May 30th, 1431. I was only 19. My contribution to society is nothing you would do at the age I was. I was a teen when I went to war to save the country. I tried my hardest to save everyone, but sometimes you might not succeed. This is my main friend, Edgar Einstein. This is my family. My sister, Maja, my wife, Madeline, Mary, my son, Hans, Albert, my second wife, Elsa, and my second son, Edward. These are my hometowns. I was born in Ireland, Germany. I lived in Switzerland, and I died in Princeton, New Jersey. I was born March 14, 1879. I died April 18, 1955. I was very smart. I didn't eat or sleep very much. I cared about my job more than my family. I discovered the formula to E equals MC squared. I, want, I wanted to be the greatest scientist ever. This was, this was my obstacle. I could not ask questions in my school. These are my major events in my life. I was named Person of the Century in 1999. I was a scientist who discovered the theories to, that to TV and the atomic bomb. Cleopatra the seventh. I was born in 69 BC in Macedonia, Greece. My father was Ptolemy the twelfth. 
My younger brother and I ruled Egypt for a while. Even though I was not born an Egyptian, they worshipped me as their own favorite and queen. It is not easy being queen. I had to wage a war against my brother and his advisors to keep the throne. He had some bad advisors. The most powerful man in Rome, Julius Caesar, fell in love with me and we got married. For a while, I moved to Rome and lived in Caesar's country, East State. When he was assassinated, I moved to, I quickly returned to Egypt. It wasn't long before the next most powerful man in Rome, Mark Anthony, came to Egypt, fell in love, and married me. One of my goals was to try to stop the Romans from taking over Egypt. Instead, Mark Anthony and I ruled Egypt and Rome. One of Julius Caesar's heirs, Octavian, wanted to be emperor and cause lots of trouble for us. If not for him, I would have succeeded. I had a big effect on these guys from Rome. Once they saw the good life we had here in Egypt, they wanted to have the same things back in Rome. But those Romans don't worship their leaders like we, like gods and kings like we do. They are just elected rulers, and although they have a lot of power, it is just not the same. Hello, my name is Jackie Robinson. I was born in Cairo, Georgia, January 31st, 1990. I am the youngest child out of four. My dad's name is Jerry and my mom's name is Matt. I am very energetic, athletic, and brave. Now, I am famous for being the first African American to play Major League Baseball. My goals were to beat my brother's records and get into the Major Leagues, which I did both. The most major event that I did was trying out and playing baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers, which is in the Major Leagues. In 1938, my brother died in a motorcycle accident. I showed society that black people can do anything white people can do. Did you know I am in the Baseball Hall of Fame? The first baseball field I played on with my brother's friends. Did you know I was in World War II? My wife is Rachel Ann. I met her in college. My idol is Joe Lewis, better known as the Brown Bomber. My real name is Jack Roosevelt Robinson. I was awarded most valuable junior college baseball player in California by college in California. I also played in the Negro League for the Monarchs. The Negro League is, is for African Americans. I died of diabetes in Stanford CT October 31st, 1972. My name is George Roos. I live on West Condon Street. My family is a working class family. My mom and dad worked in our tavern. I was a big time troublemaker. I was always doing bad things. Our street was not as peaceful as you might think. In fact, there are always people getting into trouble. I, Babe, was born in 1895 and lived a hard life. At the age of 53, I died of cancer. I will say I was a rough man. I always got into fights with my teammates. I got in a fight with one particular fan, but that was it. When I was the age of 35, I broke the home run record with 59 homers. When I broke it, I was so proud of myself. I was a new record holder. One of the goals I set for myself was to beat the highest baseball record average. When I was 37, my dream came true when I got an average of 411. That's the only baseball, the only obstacle in my way was suspension. I was suspended twice for bad teamwork. When I get suspended, it's very, very bad because it means I can't play ball for a month. When my mother died, I felt lost and alone because she meant so much to me. Now, I was the best baseball player in the world. I was known as an all-around American hero. Hi, my name is Carly Patterson. I was born February 4, 1988 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In my family, I have a little sister, Jordan, who is three years younger than me, a mom na named Natalie, and a father named Ricky. I am a gymnast. My hometown is Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where I was born. My mom was a gymnast, but she never thought to bring me up as a gymnast. I am outgoing, energetic, kind, determined, helpful, brave, and strong. I was first noticed at my cousin's birthday party when I was six years old. Then I got evaluated and I started taking class. I went to Elliott Gymnastics in Louisiana and World Olympics Gymnastics Academy in Plano, Texas. 
I have been doing gymnastics for 12 years. My coach's name is Evgeny Marchenko. There are four events in women's gymnastics. They are uneven bars, balance beam, vault, and floor exercise. On the uneven bars, there are two bars that are uneven. On the balance beam, you have to do turns and it's only four inches wide. On vault, you run and jump on a springboard and you vault over the vaulting horse. On floor exercise, you do tumbling passes. My favorite event is balance beam. My teammates are Holly Weiss, Taryn Humphrey, Chelsea Memel, and Tasha Skill. Holly Weiss is my friend and on the team. I am 18 years old and 4 feet 10 inches tall. My goals were to do my best, try to win, and to win the Olympics. Some important accomplishments of mine are winning the 2003 and the 2004 Visa America Cup and the 2004 Olympics in Athens, Greece. Some of my obstacles are fracturing my elbow and having surgery on my elbow. One major event in my life was dropping out of the 2003 World Championships because of my fractured elbow. I was very discouraged that I had to drop out. Another was winning the 2004 Olympic gold medal. I was so excited I was flipping out. Some of my contributions to society are I am a good role model. I give speeches for the American Dental Association and the United States Gymnastics Association. I am known as an Olympic champion. In the Olympics, we won silver on team event, and I won silver on beam and gold on all-round. This is how I won my all-round gold medal. First rotation, vault. My score was 9.375. Second rotation, bars. My score was 9.575. Third rotation, B. My score was 9.725. Fourth rotation, floor. My score was 9.712. In gymnastics, the score is based on how well the gymnast does in the event and what the starting value is. The starting value is how many points you can get if you do everything perfect. The highest score you can get is a 10 if your starting score is 10 and you do it perfectly. I have earned a score of 10 points. There is no higher score than 10. That is how I became famous. In my free time, I like to play with my cats, Beijing and Java. I love gymnastics. Hello, my name is Walt Disney. I was born on December 5th, 1901 in Chicago. My father, Elias, and my mother, Flora, had four sons and one daughter. I was closest to my brother Roy, who was eight years older than me. When I was four years old, my family moved to a farm near Marceline, Missouri. My dad made me do a lot of chores on the farm, that, and that was how I learned a, a value of hard work at a young age. In my, in my free time, I drew pictures of my pet pig skinny. I had a lot of different jobs as a teenager. I delivered newspapers and worked at a jelly factory. But I loved to draw, always found time to take art classes and go to the movies. After driving an ambulance for the Red Cross during World War One, I, I got a job as an an artist in Kansas City. That is when I met my friend Ub. When Ub and I lost our jobs, we started our own company making cartoons. That company failed, but I per persevered. Later, I moved to California, and my brother Roy and I started our own cartoons our own cartoon studio. I learned about cameras, a color film, and sound, and how they could make our cartoons better. When I drew a new mouse character, I named it Mortimer. My wife Lillian actually came up with an idea to change it to Mickey. Well, Mickey changed everything for me. Soon I had a big studio with a lot of people working for me. We won awards for the movies we made. I was really proud of the movies Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. One day I took my daughters to an amusement park. I 
could not believe how run down, dirty, and unsafe it was. I began to dream of a new park where families could go that would be clean and magical like the cartoons and movies my studio made. That is how I came up with building Disneyland in California. Later, I bought land in Florida to build Disney World. My favorite saying is, laughter is America's most important expert. Today, millions of families have experienced the joy and happiness of my movies and music works. Hello, my name is Wilbur. You may have heard of me and my brother Orville. We invented the first motor-powered airplane. It all started one day when my dad, our dad, Milton, brought home a rubber band powered helicopter. It sparked our imagination and we really, really liked it. When we grew up, we opened a printing shop. We used a printing machine that we made ourselves. That business didn't do well, so we decided to try something different. We decided to open a bicycle shop. Because bicycles were really popular at the time. Especially a one type called the safety bicycle, two E equals side wheel. We heard about gliders other people were building, so we decided to build one for ourselves. So we built the 1900 model. We decided we needed to improve the wings. We built the wind tunnel out of spare parts from a bicycle truck to test different wing designs. Next, we built the 1901 glider. The wings were better, but we still had trouble turning. Till one day, I was looking at, outside, out, at the birds outside, and I saw how they turned. And I, thought, and I thought, if a bird can do it, so can an airplane. When we built the 1902 bladder, we added wing warping, which we learned from my bird. The controls were called a hip cradle. With that, we were able to make the first control turn in a glider. Finally, we built the 1903 glider. This time, we added a motor which we built in our own shop. It was called the Ray Motor and had 12 horsepower. Then we packed it and shipped it to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. When we got there, we unpacked the plane and put it back together for the test flight. We had trouble taking it off from the sand, so we built the monorail. The monorail is five, six feet, foot long boards put together, and that's how it's got. With Orville at the controls, the airplane flew 120 feet for roughly landing in the sand. That was the first time in history that an airplane flew under its own power. Later that, later that same day, I flew the, the plane 852 feet and I stayed in the air for 59 seconds, proving that we really flew. We wanted to build more to sell them. I went to France to demonstrate how the plane worked for the French military. The French public really loved my hat. They called it the Wilbur cap and it started a new French fashion trend. Orville did the same for the US military. Both military age warners wanted to see if they could carry a passenger, and it did. So we built the planes to sell to them. When I, eventually, I caught typhoid fever and died on May 30th, 1912, at the age of 45. Now you know about me and my brother's adventure. This book, st Streets of Gold, this book starts out with a girl named Mary Anton. She was a young Jewish girl living in Russia. Her family owned a small grocery store. She was a little girl who wanted to be taught to, to read and write. The Tsar's police wouldn't let her go to school because she was a Jewish, Jewish and a girl. Her father was kind to a blind man who needed food. That taught her to be nice and kind to people who needed it. Then her parents' store was taken away by the Tsar's police. Her father wasn't allowed to work, so they picked and sold mushrooms. 
It wasn't enough money to get the family enough food, so her father went to America for a job. Four months later, they, they didn't know how he was until he sent his first letter. He got the money to go to America from selling a ring that a one that the blind man gave him before he died eventually. He sent enough money, eventually sent enough money so that their family could go to America. Mary and her family went by train and boat to America. On the boat, on the boat ride there, she met a boy who said that the streets of America was paved with bricks made of gold. Mary told him that, that if that was true, her father would have written to tell her. Her father greeted her at the dock a few days later. He brought her to school on the first day so that he could tell the teacher the teacher that by teaching his children, she was bringing them into a kingdom of heaven. Mary was 13 years old, and she was put into a class with the first graders, who were six years old. In six months, Mary went from first grade to fifth grade. She learned how to speak English and work and worked in her parents' new store. A few months later she wrote a poem about George Washington. Her teacher had her teacher had had her read it to the school leader. She brought Mary by trolley in by trolley to the Boston newspaper. They printed it in the newspaper the next day. Then Mary wrote to her older sister, who still lived in Russia. She told her how happy she was to live here and how proud the end. I, Robert Perry, reached the North Pole on April 6, 1909. It took me 23 years to get to the North Pole. The first time was simply to learn as much as I could about the North Pole. I learned about bitter cold winds and deep, about deep cracks in the ice. To live in the Arctic, I had to wear animal skin clothes and eat Eskimo food. I lived in an igloo. On my last trip to the North Pole, I took 24 men, 19 sleds, and 124 dogs and made it to the North Pole. Only six men lived after that trip. Hi, I'm Mia Hammer. This is my life. My, my family is my mom, Stephanie, my dad, Bill, and my brother, Garrett, that died in 1997 from a blood disease. My hometown is a lot of places because my dad was in the army, so we moved on. I was born March 17, 1977, 1972, in Salem, Alabama. I am shy and quiet around strangers, but on the field, I am aggressive and talented. Through 1987 to 1999, me and my team played 183 games and shot 114 goals. My goal is to keep striving to a complete player. My challenge was I had a hidden, hidden talent because no one thought women's soccer was a real sport. I, was a, I am a role model for kids, especially girls in sports. My major events was going to the Women's World Cup in 1991-1999. Go. Hi, my name is Grant Wood. I was born February 13th, 1999. 1891 in Iowa. I died when I was 51 years old in 1942. 
I love my mother, father, sister Nan, and one brother Frank. I love them. My favorite subject is art. I would love to be a famous artist when I grow up. It was hard to get into art school, but I did. After that, I started a free art school myself. The questions I got were, are, one, what famous paintings did you do? One of the paintings was called Iowa Cornfield in 1941. Number two, what do you paint? I like to paint chickens, landscapes, farm animals, and pictures of people on farms. What kind, number three, what kinds of paintings do you do? Chickens, landscapes, farm animals, and family. Number four, what do you do for a job? I like to paint. Number five, are you related to Tiger Woods? No, my last name is Wood, not Woods. Thank you.